Hey everyone, Dan from Mod1 here. I want to show you how you can use camera profiles to jumpstart your editing process. I've just taken this out of camera image from a Fuji camera and I've opened it into develop. This is with no adjustments applied. Sometimes when I open up a photo that's interesting to me, I might not have an idea of where I want to take it yet. Now, obviously there's a little bit of an angle to this and a little bit of distortion. We're going to fix that. But beyond that, I really kind of need to think about what I want to do with this photo. So for me, I think camera profiles is a great way to kind of explore some visual options. They live right here in the tone and color pane under camera profile. And when I click on that, I have a section of on one camera looks at the top that I can use to get started with, but you can also get the ones that are specific to your camera. And because this was photographed with a Fuji camera, there's some really cool ones that Fuji puts in as well. So I'm just gonna look through these and they kind of simulate different classic film types. And there's one in here that I really like, the Eterna Cinema. It's kind of this flat matte, almost a vintage look. So you can kind of see, let me go back to standard. You can see all those reds are a really deep red. It looks very, very modern. It looks like a digital photo. By turning it down to that Eterna Cinema, you can see how it's made it a little bit more flat, feels a little bit more like a movie to me. So I'm gonna use that camera profile to get me started with. There we go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do are some of the normal adjustments that I would do on any photo. I wanna make sure that I've set my black point and my white point so I have a good contrast range for my photo. So let's switch over to the levels. We'll take a look and see if I have all my highlights and all my shadows. Doesn't really look like any highlights are clipping here. I'm just gonna hold down my J key, grab my exposure slider, move that back and forth and look for any clipped highlights. So not really many except for those specular highlights on the whites, which I kind of want to have in there anyway. So I'm gonna bring my exposure up maybe just a little bit to help open up the background a little. That means I probably don't need to use the shadows at all. So I'll just grab my black slider now, and I just want to adjust the blacks until I have just a tiny bit of real black in there. There we go. That tiny little adjustment has brought back a lot of the contrast in the photo. Next thing I want to do is I kind of want to straighten it out a little bit and get rid of this bit of distortion that we have at the bottom. So I'm going to use the transform pane and the lens correction pane. So let's scroll down here to lens correction. Oop, looks like I had lens correction turned off. Let's turn that on. There you go. You can see how it's picked up the lens and it's automatically corrected for a lot of that curvature. So you can see there's off. We get kind of that fish eye, that wide angle distortion. I turn that on and you can see that helps a lot to correct for that. Now let's turn on the transform pane and I'm just going to do a little bit of correction for the perspective. The camera was tilted to the left a little bit. So let's use the horizontal slider and that's going to help us to even out that horizon line a bit. There we are. And, you know, I'm going to go back to lens correction. I'm going to open up the manual slider and I'm going to use a little bit of extra distortion removal to straighten that line out even more. There we go. And we'll grab the crop tool and I'm going to crop that bottom line off all the way. Even though that line wasn't in there, it was important to me to go through and correct for it so that I could make sure everything else looked nice and straight. I'm going to remove that background as well. I really just want this army of red cans. So there we go. And then I think the last thing I want to do is I want to really accentuate the area that's in focus. So in this case, it happens to be this second row of cans right through here. So I want to bring in a little additional sharpness there. To do that, I'll just use a local adjustment. So I'm going to turn on the local adjustments pane. I'm going to grab the gradient adjustment tool and I'm going to set it to reflected gradient and I'll use the detail preset. That's gonna turn up the detail in the photo. And now I just simply click right here in the middle where I wanna accentuate that. So you can see as I move that around, the region that's getting sharpened or getting that additional detail is right in the middle between those two lines. So then I can adjust the lines to pick just the region that's really in focus. That's the only part I really wanna add that sharpness to. Come down to the structure slider here in the local adjustment pane to really dial in just how much of that enhancement I want. There we go, I'm gonna turn it up pretty high. Cool, let's take a look at the before and the after here. So there's our original photo out of camera. And there's our photo after a few adjustments here in develop. We use the camera profile as our inspiration for this more cinematic treatment for the photo. And then I use the basic controls inside of develop. I corrected for the distortion and then enhanced the detail in the sharp area, just like that. All right, thanks for watching.